I started taking every customer very, very seriously. Even a single order will come, I'll call him, I'll, you know, at the time of delivery, the product is delayed, I'll call him. Up. I'm talking about the initial payment days. And, and the post delivery, I'll call him, hey, everything is good or not. In 50 days, I'll check up. So we have like, I, I used to do like five to six calls uh, to a customer which are outbound calls where the customer is not expecting work from me. Hello, welcome to another episode of Stars and Startups with me, Varun Bhumi. If you're a first-time listener, don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to the podcast. All links can be found in the show notes. We have Ankit Garg of Wakefit on the show today. Wakefit is a brand that has been offering Indian customers the ability to buy a mattress online and have it delivered at their homes at a very affordable price, bringing down the cost of upgrading old mattresses easy and extremely affordable. Ankit is an IIT rookie graduate who was at Bayer Chemicals, and as you will discover during this podcast, he has wanted to create a brand that is truly generational. If you haven't wa- heard of Wakefit, I'd be truly surprised because if you've been looking for a mattress recently, you'll definitely find Wakefit with thousands of reviews on Amazon at this point. So uh, here's that story. We discuss a lot of fun things, including starting up and creating the mattress brand. So let's say hi to Ankit and welcome to the show. Uh, hey Ankit, welcome to Stars and Startups. Hey, thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for the kind introduction. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. You know, uh, in in uh, you know the last five years, I've bought a mattress uh, three times, and uh, uh, Wakefit was part of the consideration set, right? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a consumer, but mm-hmm. I was amazed at uh, how mattress purchases have gone online. And the more interesting part is very few products on Amazon that you see have so many thousand reviews, right? Uh, you'd probably find some products with a few hundred reviews, maybe, uh, you know, uh, products that you buy so much more often uh, where, you know, people are engaging more often. But I was amazed to see, you know, kind of a, a listing for a mattress uh, with uh, I think the most recent number was 15,000 plus reviews. And what is more interesting was that it had such a high rating. And even more interesting was that people don't buy mattresses that often, right? At least that's my perception of mattresses, right? Um, and my understanding, the function of a mattress review is that there are, uh, you know, you'll have a, a fraction of all purchases who leave a review. Right? Not every purchase results in a review. So that means the number of orders you're probably getting on this mattress. So firstly, I would like to uh, I like you to break it down for me. <laughs> what is it to sell a mattress on Amazon? I think I'll answer that, but in return you'll have to answer me another question that you did. You did not buy anyways. <laughs> so I'll just start with this. Uh, see, uh, in the last five years, I think this whole I would say it's a tectonic shift in the purchasing behavior of the people online. For the mattress, especially as the, the industry, uh, when I started way back in 2015, uh, the industry was hardly 0.1%, 0.2% of overall of you know overall business, just 0.1% was something like that used to do online. But I think today, if you look at the numbers, the numbers are astonishing. Uh, numbers is so if you look at the organized market, I think about 10% of the overall organized market is online. So you can imagine, you know, what you were thinking probably is it's slightly off in the numbers. That, you know, there are thousands and thousands of the mattresses which are getting sold every day. In fact, to give you some numbers, we sell about uh, 1,500 mattresses every day. So that's a quite a huge number for you to, uh, you know, uh, look at the look at the overall size of the business. Uh, that is one. Second is uh, uh, the number of reviews on Amazon uh, and the rating of the Amazon. These are two slightly different things. Uh, obviously, they are interconnected, but I will break it for you. Uh, so the number of people, uh, the the number of reviews on Amazon are directly proportional to the number of months or years that you have spent on that platform. Because it, the older or the more the number of customers are, the chances of you having more. So we have been there on Amazon for five years plus. I think it's about six years now because I started in December 2014. So it's six years plus that I have been on Amazon. Uh, if you look at any new brand, which is actually a closest competitor to me, they are about two years old. One year old, one and a half year old. So you could clearly see that the reason for the 
you know, huge difference between the number of users because we have been there on the platform for a very, very long time. So, so the ratings, uh, I, I was telling the story that, you know, how did I, how did I ensure that the ratings of the products are very good on Amazon? I think it goes to my first startup and uh, I started my first company, it failed miserably, I lost a lot of money, I think I lost my confidence, everything was shattered. So it kind of developed a, a sort of a fear in me that you know, if the customers are not really willing to buy a product at the price that you want to sell and the kind of services that you're offering, you're going to get screwed up, right? So you get afraid. So what happened on Amazon is that you know, because of that prior experience of mine, I started taking every customer very, very seriously. Like, even a single order will come, I'll call him, I'll, you know, at the time of delivery, if the product is delayed, I'll call him. I'll I'm talking about the initial pain days. And, and the post delivery, I'll call him, hey, everything is good or not. After 50 days, I'll check out. So we have like, I, I used to do like five to six calls uh, to a customer which are outbound calls where the customer is not expecting work from me just to check out if everything is okay or not because of this sheer amount of fear that the customer is not happy that my company might go for a toss. See, so that was a seed in my thought process which came in and eventually what happened is the next set of people which I started getting on into my team, they started learning from me what I do and that became a standard side process. So now because of, and then now you call it customer centricity, you now you call it voice of customer, customer excellence, you know, so many words there. So essentially what I was doing here is that because of this, I created a company around which is highly customer centric. And and we we do more number of outbound calls than the number of inbound calls to figure out if the customer is active or not. Uh, to just give you some numbers, uh, uh, we have about 250 people in my team which do only the outbound calls to the customer just to check out, hey, are you comfortable using the product? Right. So so that's a that's a gene, and this kind of reflects to the kind of a rating uh, you know, we have been able to get on that. So that's all. That's all uh, pretty much. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that you spent, um, you know, the, the the number of ratings is a function of how much time you've spent on the platform, right? Uh, okay. That also means that your ortho product, uh, the ortho mattress that I was referring to before, uh, has been on the platform for a very very long time, right? Um, okay. And probably is one of your best sellers. Right? Um, so was that the first product you launched um, on on Amazon? And was Amazon the only uh, uh, you know platform you started with? Uh, what is that journey like? So I I lost five products at that point of time. I just like a typical mattress company. I was trying to imitate their offering. So I had spring mattress, latex mattress, coy mattress, foam mattress, memory foam mattress. Like I lost five types. And then uh, at the same part of time, you know, because of this continuous calling the customers. In fact, you know, initially I used to travel in my car and go to the customer house to take the feedback, you know, because sometimes I thought taking a very detailed feedback from a customer would help me improve a lot. In fact, that helped me. In the beginning. Uh, so uh, what I started getting very constant, of, so there was, this was an observation that, you know, a lot and lot more people loved automatic. Uh, very few loved the spring mattress and then latest mattress were also like, but people didn't want to pay so much money for the mattress. So based on those conversations, uh, conversations, experiences, the return, you look at the return data for your products, uh, so many stuff, we figured out that automatic is something which is just most loved by people. In fact, one true learning that came out of that uh, exercise was that people are not really looking forward to number of choices on the product. Like they don't want you to have green color, blue color, six inches, eight inches, uh, five layers of foam, three layers of spring, and two layers. So they don't want you to complex things, right? At the end of the day, what they're looking for is a comfortable sleep. Can you offer a comfortable sleep? That's all they want, right? So you really don't have to complex the purchase behavior for a customer. Like, you, know, you walk into a showroom today. Today, if you go to a typical offline store, you'll find out. The moment you enter, you you first have to count the number of colors in which the mattress are available. Then you go inside what all different types are available. Then you go in different qualities in the types are available. <coughs> so you can create as number of complexity you want. But I think we, I, I got it very early that you know I have to really make sure that you know the customers are looking for comfort, not looking for mattress. I have to design my mattress according to the customer's comfort. So that's that's what led to a very quick learning that you know, auto mattress is something that people are looking for. So I kept on improving year on year, um, just like an iPhone. I say it very often, like if iPhone can upgrade from five to six to seven to eight to ten, why can't a mattress upgrade to uh, let's say auto one, two, three, four, five? Like because you know that's what. So today we have about seventeenth uh, iteration of the product which is running right now for the. So every quarter we sort of change the mattress. And in the last quarter, 
whatever we have learned from the customer that is this is a problem that is facing we adapt the problems and create a solution and then you know make sure that this this doesn't happen again so i think that is what has kept us always ahead of the curve because if you look at the offline people the they don't have a medium as such uh, to to collect the data of the customer and you know speak to them and figure out what is wrong what is right but as a online company uh, we always had a way to connect and i think we went a very fundamental way of you know, meeting the customers in person calling them taking their time on sundays and saturday meeting them all that so i think we got a very rich data which also reflects in the ratings i mean it's not it's not just you know amount of time or let's say you being very afraid of customer not being happy it's also about what you are observing constantly and what you are giving back to the product because of those learnings so you're a chemical chemical engineer right uh, mm-hmm. and you have identified a way in which to improve the product uh, you know constantly mm-hmm. is there a f- mm-hmm. framework that you using uh, from a product standpoint to translate that feedback into a product yeah yeah that's all i do uh, basically i'm a physical product manager <laughs> so if you physical means i i i product manage the matters my product the real product not the side of the product or app <laughs> so what i do is i i, I take these food that's very very serious like everything for example uh, the way that we pack our mattresses today are really inspired by some of the feedback you want people for example some people said so earlier i used to give them white gunny bag you would have seen that guy white sag uh, the cover that used to you would have seen right yeah, uh, yeah. when i i used to deliver mattresses in those kind of white sags and when i please the customers out they said hey i want to give you feedback so, yeah please tell me they said uh, the moment i received the mattress it looked like it came from a local shop from third class mattress i said why why did you think so he said because it came in a white gunny sack bag i said okay <laughs> so you then you have to solve the packaging in order for the people to feel that it's really coming from a trusted source so there is one this is one of the learning right similarly a uh, lot of people said that you know i i wake up in the morning i feel my back is stressed Uh, a lot of people said that you know if when it is a peak summer time let's say somebody in chennai uh, i don't i don't really feel uh, uh, comfortable because there is a lot of heat uh, and i sweat through the night so can you do something about it so then people said i need a softer matter people said i have a pregnant wife uh, can you ensure that you know when we are sleeping together on the wife so, you know wife gets some more and more amount of comfort because generally women tends to get um, back pain issues in, at the time of pregnancy right so these are the so many issues i got to know which are which can you can directly relate to the mechanical properties of the foam which is used inside the mattress for example if you have to make the mattress more breathable yeah. let's say the person who's sleeping in chennai and so yeah it's a month it's april and it's very hot what you can do is you can make the cells of the mattress more bigger so that the ventilation in the cells is very big so i start the reticulation of the cells i started making them bigger and bigger so that more and more of, uh, air can press us so this is one thing that i am this is one of the example like say another example would be very clear with this people said hey i've seen mattresses you know generally people keep mattresses for 5 years to 10 years somewhere in between and in any part of their life they would have sipped a coffee or a cold drink or or a tea on the on the bed and that it would have definitely slipped over the mattress right and you you will see that patch remains forever with you <laughs> and that doesn't go off because the matter cover you cannot take off so that was a learning what i did is i i made a zipper cover which is a removable cover on the mattress now you can remove that cover wash it in machine remove that patch and again put it back so you are able to maintain hygiene right these are the very small small things that you keep on learning from while talking to customers so i'm a i'm a freak in that way like i, I ensure that every feedback if it is a countable feedback you can really find a decent number of people are feeling bad about it i ensure that you know the next iteration of the product should not happen do you translate some of these learnings as separate products or does it go to the main product itself um, you know that you are uh, able to yeah. sell as a separate uh, with a separate property yeah so uh, so now that we have extended you would have noticed on the website we have not just the mattress company we have started sleep accessories like bed sheets pillows protectors comforters and now we have entered into mainstream furniture business where we are selling sofas beds dining coffees chairs travel and you know become full fledged at home solutions company now so imagine your home imagine you give us a sofa we give you the home sort of thing like everything under the roof so that is what we are trying to bring upon and then uh, what i realized uh, varun is that every product has a different journey every product has a different a uh, need of a customer to fill 
so it is not necessary that what you learn in one product could actually be copied in the second product right of course you'll have to build the fundamentals like fundam so i i take very solid fundamentals one is customer has to be happy that is unsaid we have to listen to the customer very closely every day every hour and that feedback has to be again worked upon in the next iteration that you build so that is the second thing third is you have to ensure that the quality of the products are really really nice that people really should throw off your product only if they're bored they should not throw it because it's broken or you know it's not comfortable or anything like that you should only throw it when you're bored the fourth problem the fourth fundamental is that you you have to be humble to the customer you have to be connected to the customer you have to listen to the customer so all in all if you notice all these four points are all around customer centricity so i ensure that you know, everything is very very customer centric in accepting the feedback receiving the feedback speaking to them giving them the right experience of the product just stuff like that so this is the fundamental i have taken which is uh, transferred to each of the uh, product category that we own be it a sofa or a dining or a coffee or a tv unit uh, but every product has its own set of problems like a, a, a problem in a sofa would be very different than a problem in a mattress so you have to look at each and every product go deep dive talk to the customer and figure out what is wrong and solve it so i go so I'm, i'm more spontaneous in that way i try to launch things quite early and then in the next three months we go very very close to the customer so to learn what it be do wrong then we bring a new iteration and then again we go to this so it's a very repetitive process of constantly being very close to the customer listening to them and then again working out back in the past so eventually in two years or three years of time you reach a place where more than 90% of your customers are happy so that i think we are in a very early stage we feel Uh, because of some learnings in the matter that we have done a decent job in furniture but there's a lot more to be done and i feel uh, to to really break the furniture industry in india which is which is 90% unorganized you really got to work up when when did you start diversifying right because uh, you know you said you sell about 100 uh, 1500 mattresses a day uh, at the moment yeah. which is a phenomenal number right uh and and i'm guessing that just a uh, tip of the iceberg and there's a lot more to be done uh in the matter space itself right um yeah. is it a function of the market that you need to be in more categories uh, to be able to get the brand out there or uh, there was another purpose for going uh, down this path yeah so uh, for for us uh, what we realized is that you know in in the last 4 years so this whole concept of furniture started coming in uh, last year i guess it was 2019 and somewhere in the month of january february we said if we wanted to just launch the extended products products for example somebody buying a mattress can we launch a bed like it was so organic for us to kind of figure out like let's launch the bed there's nothing wrong with it so we launched the bed and we started seeing how customers react to for us selling it on that so we did that that was pretty much organic like sofa is very interesting to product So this happened during the corona time. I think uh, everybody was uh, sitting at home. Nobody was, you know, thinking of business because it was in God's hand, and we did not know what is going to happen, right? So, so we used to have every day meeting, like what we have on Saturday these days. We have every day senior leadership team meeting for two hours, three hours, just brainstorming. Whenever the market opens up, what do we do? What's the strategy? I think that part of the strategy it came out that you know we have to build furniture as a category. I'll tell you why it came out. the furniture the category it came out because if we when we reflected on the last four years of wake fit what we have realized is that we have learned or probably have kind of understood the path to build a profitable product so it's not only the matter that you know that matters what we learned is how to really create a product category online so i think all those learnings were very very strong the moment we started discussing more and more like do we really know how to build a sofa category do we really know i think the answer started coming up very strong that we are essentially not a company where uh, uh, we know this is what we know like we knew the process how to build the product so we knew the process of building a super nice product for a customer right so i think that made us get into the furniture because we also knew that you know matter is still a very small market to look into but furniture is something which is highly broken very fragmented with different set of customers everybody needs furniture and then the market size is probably 20 times the size of the matter so it was very very organic for us to kind of tap into a bigger market and then we know the process so it was mostly organic i would say you're selling a product that has uh, a need uh, of of you know people that experience it right even if you look at 
uh, uh, India, wherever people want to touch it, press it, sit on it, sleep on it, right? They want to do all of that. And how has this changed? Uh, you know, in the last half a decade, while you're doing this, um, you know, for people to say, okay, I saw this ad online. I'm now ready to buy a mattress, and I'm going to place an order. So, I'll, I'll actually tell you, this is very different than what you and me thought. I, I used to also think like that, and you're probably thinking like that. Uh, so most of the mattress business earlier, and also today, also used to happen through word of mouth, like. If, it, for example, somebody in your family bought a X brand mattress, you will happen to call him. Hey, I came to your house. I sat on that mattress someday. Because generally in a house, like it's very traditional that people sit on the mattress even if the guest comes, right? So far, yeah. still a still a far away thing in many of the families. People come sit in the bedroom, they talk, right? So people used to say, Hey, I sat on your mattress. Seems very, very, very nice. Hey, I went to that hotel. I slept in that hotel. You know, that was a really nice, fluffy mattress. On it. So people's people kind of make a memory of a mattress in their head and whenever it comes to them they have to buy a mattress generally they knock the door where they have liked the most so what happened is obviously initially there was a lot like, there are very few people who who like to buy mattresses online so and I think on it bought it there are very very few people but what happens over a period of time is, is that the set grows because of the organic nature of it for example as you said like it's not a frequent uh, purchase behavior i tell you some of the facts here so if somebody purchases a mattress from Bakefit, we have seen he or she inform at least four or five people to buy a mattress from us. So that is how we get 4x away. Like a, we know if we sell it to you, you sell four more. If the product is good, the service is good, and everything is good, like whole experience is good. So that's why we have been very, very bang on in ensuring that the insurance, the, the experience of buying a product, using the product, ordering the product has to be top notch because we know you. You are you are going to be my salesman, right? You are going to inform a lot more people in your influence, and when they are going to come to your house. So, so I've seen a couple of times. I'll give you some example, right? So I used to meet friends, tough friends, and I used to hear their stories. Uh, until now, I hear the story. Some people would say, "Hey, like for example, there's a guy called Anuj. He's a college friend of mine, and he has a friend in his hometown called Jamnagar. Uh, so he got uh, his friend called me to his house for some party. You know, they were having some." Some fun, some fun, and suddenly he said, "Hey, Anuj, come! I'll show you something amazing." So he took him to the box, uh, through the bedroom. He made him feel. Hey, he feel this mattress. Do you find it something different? He said, "Yeah, yeah, something is different." Where did you buy it from? He said, "Wait, and this guy said, "Hey, he's my friend." <laughs> so, so many. So what happens is that sleep is something which is very underrated in India. But let's say if you get the comfort, you speak a lot more about it. This is. This is true for every product. For example, like a brand can only be made by word of mouth. That is what we believe, and that is that is something. If you crack really well, I think there's always a growth that is which is waiting for you. I think for us, online was just a medium to get into it. Online was just a medium to uh, kind of let people know, hey, we exist. But most of our sale happens when they validate. Hey, I looked at this matter. Do you have it in the house? He said, Yeah, I have it. Hey, I've seen this matter online. Uh, and I've read fifteen thousand reviews on Amazon. Can you believe it? They say, "Yeah, I bought it." Yeah, it is true, right? So, so people do a lot of validation of what they see online. They just don't go and buy it online. I think the whole amount of shiftable matters. So, if you look at furniture, furniture is just two three percent of the overall full furniture market in India as an online market. But matters from ten percent because matters is something where people really want to check, yeah. not by visiting a store. Of course, you visit a store. But you also like to talk to somebody where you have experienced it, and that previous person, if he was with it, most likely you don't get it. So that's how it went. Pretty much uh, like that works. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the technology itself of a mattress, right, um, is uh, has a lot changed there, because I mean, you, I think like a, a foam, the technology of foam, has uh, definitely not changed a lot in in the last uh, you know many years. Right? Um, is there some innovation here uh, that is propelling uh, the business? Um, you know, and, and that we're able to bring to the front. So uh, I I see is if, if you call innovation like somebody creating a new type of home altogether, I don't think that's happening. Like it's, it's a very common technology. It's a commodity. It has been made for almost 30, 40 years. Very consistently, people are making it, and of course. 
there are advancement advancement in phone technology every year but the advancements are not something which are very very highly innovative right? something out of the blue it's very very like i improved this property of the phone i i i degraded this quality of the phone my i created a little different type of a structure in the phone so this is a very minuscule sort of advancement happens. but what i've seen is that uh, uh, most of the advancements are happening which are related to calibrate into what people need for example if if a customer says i need a mat which is more fluffier which is more supportive to the back so people have started changing their formulation according to the customer need earlier so i'll give you some very classic example of a name and way to understand it you know earlier what used to happen in the typical companies uh, offline companies in india in mattress industry is that they had a laboratory they created a mattress inside the laboratory and then they used to give it to a customer right yeah. so the customer has to keep on buying that mattress because that is what is available and there was no feedback loop for these brands to kind of speak to the customer and figure out because everything they thought what we are building is the best this is what the market should buy and the people used to buy right now it has become very vocal like people have started sharing their concerns on twitter facebook they will even reach on linkedin they write an email to you they'll phone call you they'll whatsapp you they'll so they will tell you what is wrong with me right so being online is something that so which has made these people started also so in the whole traditional matter in the people have started getting to listen much more than earlier now a person directly writes an email to the ceo of some let's say big company and then he like hey the product that you created is creating this problem so then he becomes very serious about it and then he starts calibrating his product so there is no innovation i think people are more and more adapting to what people really like that's what i'm seeing got it no i mean uh, because i i remember a few years back and, and i was in the us uh, and somebody said oh you know uh, this is a nasa technology foam right and i was like for a moment i thought ki like what has really changed what's what's different that this foam has gone to the moon and back right i i wasn't sure you know what they are referring to and i started digging a little bit and uh, you know i mean it's just that that particular foam etc that formulation was something that they used but reality is you know uh, it, it's not that different from anything that's being used commercially like you just pointed out um so with the indian audience in mind uh, you know from the first version that you put out and to the to the options you have right now um has there has there been any uh, uh, you know like you said there are some customers who want it for for their pregnant wife uh, for you know the better weather uh, so there are there are different formulations that you've created in the foam uh, thing um does all of this get made in the same kind of setup or do you need like separate uh, you know setups for each of these No, 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 I don't think you need a separate set. Of only what you need is a laboratory to kind of work. So it's it's an iterative process of you let's say listen to a customer that this is what they want. You go to a laboratory, create a product, then go to a mass production facility, test it out with a new set of customers in the same place whether they really find the problem or not, which was pointed out earlier, and then you again repeat the process. So same product, same machines, same raw materials, only minor tweaks that you. For example, let's say. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 let's say 1 is very very soft and 10 is extremely hard so earlier your mattress was let's say on a rating of 5 which means it's a medium soft and then people give you the feedback that hey i i need a medium firm mat so what you did is you actually changed from 5 to 7 so that shift is not uh, a shift which you cannot do in the same set of lines that you have if you more or less you're calibrating a little bit here and there just to figure out the right form for you so but but what i've seen in addition to that is that the adoption of the adoption of the new types of mattresses is very very heavy like we are when you say ortho is a memory foam mattress uh earlier way back about let's say five years back uh, memory foam mattress would hardly be 1% of the overall market uh, but today i think we are about 7 to 8% of the market, which i guess is of course a definite uh, change in types of you know, the kind of foam so the foam was always always available in the market but people really didn't like it or even even if they liked it it was so costly but i think we made it very very affordable we we started producing in bulk uh, we started uh, distributing in bulk so all of that kind of gave us a lot of cost benefits and we passed on to the customer so it became a common thing something like something like cars right so the cars were really not really adapted the 800 was something that people used to love now people are migrated to SUVs and all so you know it, it's a very similar story so the technology existed tires existed engines existed drivers existed everything existed but just people modified to what people want 
Ankit, you brought up this uh, point where you're saying, you know, now about 7% of the audience, uh, you know, buy uh, a foam mattress. Um, even today, a lot of people don't believe that foam mattresses can actually give you the sleep that you're looking for, right? Uh, there's a huge segment that still, uh, you know, kind of shit on the foam mattress saying, you know, it's bad for you. It, it's just not good for your life, uh, bad for your back, uh, so on. And, and they continue to sell the coir mattresses. Of course, the coir also has a layer of foam on top of it, which they don't talk about. Uh, right? There, is, there are layers of that. And coir just forms a uh-huh. part of it. Think of it as a filler or something, right? Um, what what would you say to them? What What is it that you know, you're able to do with foam that they're not able to achieve with that? And, and where do you see the market going? Uh-huh. I think... Uh, I... I, I... I would like to uh, I would like to tell a story. You know what happens is even if you go to YouTube today, uh, it's, it's very common in the mattress market. See what happens is there are some brands who are very famous in making uh, natural latex mattresses. There are some brands who are very famous in making memory foam mattresses. Some brands in let's say a spring and some brands are in very famous in making coir mattresses. Right? If you go look at the videos that these brands have posted in the online media, let's say YouTube. A koi matter would have said everything beautiful about the koi and then everything else is a shit. Similarly, a spring I have said the same thing, the memory foam and the latex, right? So, what happens is uh, the moment, whichever video you come across, you make up your opinion based on that, right? So, it's, it's very, very artificial. It's like, it's the negativity of the online world. Is every, everybody has an opinion that the opinion might make an opinion based on it, right? So, there's an unfortunate part where you listen to a lot of people and then you get influenced and you don't know whether this guy is an expert or not. So unfortunately, this is the same thing happening in the foam mattress market or any market per se that people in India are taking this from the people who are really not the experts. I would suggest you you deep dive more, you learn more, you really understand why foam is bad or good for you and then I think you should take an informed decision. Uh, and, and, and at least in the today's world where, where everything is online, you can just do a couple of Google searches. You can go to Amazon, read a lot more reviews that people are going to different types of matters. You can make your own informed decision rather than getting convinced by you know some some random guy telling you some random shit. So I think this is what I would say. Well, you haven't answered my question, <laughs> which is you know what uh, is there really a difference, right? Because I think where the confusion happens is that you know. Hmm. Uh, there is there is a product which is coir mattress or spring mattress, which has been around mm-hmm. for a long time, right? Uh-huh. Uh, now uh-huh. home has become kind of you know obviously uh, uh, preferred by DTC D, direct to consumer brands like yourself because easy uh-huh. to ship to the customer and so on, right? Okay. Yeah. Now there is obviously this traditional law wisdom that people have had mm. because they've been using for a long time, saying no, this is the best one because I've been using it for thirty years, right? Or I've been mm-hmm. using it for 50 years and I've had no problem with coir. Why foam today? Mm-hmm. And I think that's yeah. the point of debate, right? You're saying, you know, one's better than the other. But then how does yeah. one, you know, I mean, of course, the reviews will say, okay, I got this mattress now and it's beautiful. I, I use a foam mattress myself, right? Now I can say, no, no, there's no problem. So, but how does yeah. one decide that one's better than the other? See, uh, I can give you some technical points to look at. Uh, one thing that we have we all should understand is uh, a lot of people say quiet matters is a natural product. So that is why it is it is naturally beautiful. It gives you those magical feelings and all that. But the truth is coir is natural, but the coir matters is not natural. So the making of a coir, if you look at if you Google and they find out you know how the coir matters are made, you'll be surprised to see this tremendous amount of chemicals. In fact, a lot of people in India, people use uh, urea formaldehyde, which is carcinogenic in nature. And if you go to any coir manufacturing facility, you might not be able to stand there because there's so much of smell, so much of harmful, harmful chemicals that people are adding up. Just because coir is a natural product, so they everybody believes you know it's a, it's a natural product. It's not that. That is one thing. Second is, we also should understand if there is any natural product, be it cotton or be it coir, the moment you are giving strength to the natural product through an artificial glue, right? It, the, so the tree doesn't produce matters, right? Tree produces those fine parts of coir. And then you glue them to make, give them a shape of a, uh, the mattress. But 
if you notice closely inside the cell structure of those uh, uh, the coil, you will see one stick of coil is stuck to the second stick of the coil, the third stick, the fourth stick, the fifth stick. What is holding them together is a mere glue, that adhesive. So, if it is an artificial, it is not a original natural glue. Then what happens is the cells starts breaking as you keep on jumping on the mattress. And that is why you will notice that you are using a coil mattress. It will be like a boat, it's like this. Yep. So this is your uh, hip area, this is your head, and this is your leg. So it will become like a boat, correct? But that is because you are using an artificial product to manufacture a mattress thing, which is in coil. But if you look at the foam mattresses, uh, foam mattresses are very, very versatile. It will be really wrong to say a foam is the best product or foam is the worst product. But it all depends on how do you really build the mattress all together. It's like a recipe, right? You, you're cooking, let's say, a chicken biryani for yourself. You can really create a worst kind of a chicken biryani or a great kind of, but chicken is good, biryani is good, right? <laughs> at, at the end of the day, it's a manufacturer, it's a, it's a chef who's cooking the product. Similarly, in the foam mattress industry, I'll give you some examples which will really, uh, which will tell you, wow. Uh, so, so foam is such a versatile material that in your shoes, uh, shoe soles, there's foam. When you drive a car, uh, the steering wheel has a foam, the gear knob has a foam, uh, the, the dashboards have the foam, the, the roof liner, that has a foam. A lot of times, uh, uh, people are making tires out of foam, uh, which are which are puncture, puncture proof tires. Uh, you, you, sit, you use your laptop, uh, below the keys, you have foam. Uh, the chairs that you sit on, the seat of the chair is foam, the back is the foam, the handrest, even that hard handrest that you feel is a foam. This bicycle seat is a foam. The cricket bed can also be made out of foam, which is a really hard wood, like exact replica of wood you can create in foam. So what I'm trying to tell you is, foam is such a versatile material that you can make a really solid wood product like a bed, cricket bed, to a very cushioned product in the car where you're sitting comfortably on the cushion of it, right? So it depends. So you can really formulate, you can really play around uh, depending on what you really want to build for the customers. But for any other product which exists in the nature, be it a coil or a spring, it is very, very limited in terms of what you can play around with it. So hence, it always gives you that immense power to create a very, very wonderful product for you. What you want, you might have a bit, very bad experience because you know, the person who designed that foam for you probably is not the right person, but it would really not be right to say that you know foam cannot be able. I think you can really create wonderful class mattresses. I'll give you some examples also in the last uh, when I started this Wakefield about five years back, uh, the foam as an overall market of the mattress was about about 40%. And then about 30% of it uh, was coir, and then about 15% uh, you know, was spring, and then 15% was something else, like mix of different stuff. But now if you look at the last five years, the coir mattress, which was about 30%, is now shrunk down to 15%. The spring has moved from 15% to, let's say, about 20%, and the foam mattresses have become about 60% of the overall market. So, which means if there is an organic shift of mattresses happening from one segment to another segment, it cannot be a wrong product. Like nature doesn't allow, it's a, it's a law of nature. You cannot have a wrong product, you know, succeeding well year on year. On year. It has to be a good product, which means better engineers, uh, better products, better machineries, uh, better ways of manufacturing the raw materials. I think that all has got very, very advanced. And now you can really build a very classic good looking, very comfortable mattress uh, using this. Um, so you brought up a couple of interesting points, right? Which was saying that, you know, a, a natural product obviously breaks down, uh, you know, goes through its, uh, you know, whole uh, process of degeneration, right? Now in this, in this scenario, uh, foam obviously has a higher shelf life or even a, a, a life uh, being utilized. Um, and, and I've read some numbers where I think every 10 to 12 years, you need to change that mattress or, or something of that sort. Is that because of hygiene reasons or is it because the foam, because I, I, I can't imagine the foam breaking down, right? Because that's not how the structure is. Uh, I, I think it's, it's mostly about hygiene. It is mostly about hygiene. Maybe even if you go to the country like, for example, Dubai, Dubai has a policy of five years that every five years you have to change the mattress. Then be, it can be any mattress, be it a foam or a spring or a coil or whatever it may be, then every five years you have to change. Similarly, in US, you find different uh, different lifetimes of a different product. But in, I think in India, people are still 
you know they they use it till the time that they can maximum use it uh though there's nothing in continuing to use a product if it is worth fine for you all that you have to maintain is that the hygiene when you're sleeping on a mattress you sweat a lot in the night you produce a lot of toxins that all goes into your mattress if at all you can clean it maintain it properly if you have a ventilated room you can continue to use a mattress for that there's no there's no problem at all mm-hmm. 10 to 12 is probably a wrong uh, a wrong number maybe some of the people just you know out of the out of the blue they give some gap but is is just anything <laughs> your kid can do to my You, your kid can pee tonight on the matter and you might want to change it tomorrow <laughs> so there's no there's no saying of okay. tense when you take this product which is you know uh, literally unbreakable and you don't need to change it for a long period of time uh venture okay. investors are obviously not going to be very uh, happy with the fact that you don't have a repeat customer right mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. from you know you've raised about 10 million plus from venture investors so far um you know as wake fit uh, how does this play into that narrative uh, you know what are the objections um, you know that you guys face uh, from from you know this being in the sleep market yeah yeah so i think of course there are apprehension when somebody talks to us that you know what is the lifetime of your mattress and we say that hey it can nothing can happen to the mattress for 20 years from today so they get surprised like is it really true that you know 20 years nothing will happen and they say yeah, yeah. so technology is not nothing will happen to the mattress but then they ask the right question that you ask and hey, what will happen to the customer he will not come back and shop it again right so this is a true problem and i think uh, uh, that is why we had to venture out into the different products as well because mattress we really find you know, what we have made is a really very strong product and we don't need to change it very often until it's you are bored out of it uh then we had to go into sheet pack sheet business which is high frequency business then you had to go comfort business the dohers business which is about a year every year you change your quilts and quilts covers and pillows every every 18 months to 24 months you change your pillows uh similarly then that's why we had to venture into the furniture also because the reason the furniture is also uh furniture is more trendy uh, every 5 years 10 years people taste change the change the kind of a furniture they have in the house so it was so this is a very strong problem that exists today if you're making a a product which can last for 20 years what would happen to the same customer i think we cannot change the the product we can we cannot make it inferior just because we think the market will not exist after 20 years but it's just that you need to find something else i'll give you some example classic example of this uh, and it is very similar to what we're doing i think there's a there's a machine called uh, eltendorf So the name of the machine is a German company, and they make a machine. It's a panel, so it's called Altendorf, okay. and it is used for cutting the wood. So this gentleman, who's who's actually in charge in India for this company, he came and met me and said, uh, "Hey, you you requested for us to give us a quotation for this machine, and this is a quotation." I said, "Boy, this machine, what you're giving me is three times costlier than the alternative. Why would I even consider it?" and he said okay do you think you can spare one hour with me i said okay no problem i can he said come in my car i'll show you something he took me to a factory which is nearby and he showed me a machine which was 28 years old he said you know what when i sell it to you i feel bad because i cannot sell it to you all <laughs> so so what i'm trying to tell you is the there's a there's a fun there's a there's a great thing in building the products which last for years and all because you you feel proud of building something like that but at the end of the day i think the market is always there there are always set of people who would not believe in you today and who would believe in you tomorrow so you as a company you always keep to grow but this is a good problem for you to have right this is something great you are doing for your business uh, when you creating a product which is so liked by people and it could exist for hundreds of years so yeah. uh, i think we so much on similarly we have done in the shisham wood the solid wood beds that we make out of jodhpur these are hard wood solid wood beds trust me you can continue to use it for 50 years you can continue to you so in fact we say that you know you can pass on to your generation and your generation can pass on to you, their next generation and the wood will still remain same like the the cord will remain same but that's the beauty of the product right i mean i cannot uh, i cannot sell it uh, stop myself to sell it because just it will last for 30 40 50 years it reminds us of business we are I think it reminds me of uh, you know uh, I think our parents generation owned those big uh, uh, Godrej cupboards right uh, the metal ones you know I, I'm so so strong so solid 
right that uh, it's yeah. very hard to even move out of your house <laughs> once it is in there <laughs> right you can't move yeah. it from one room to the other probably uh yeah. that's no, why i said uh, you have to really get bored of it to throw it <laughs> and i think people people get bored that's for sure that's what keeps us in business <laughs> well uh, it's good to good to aspire to a generational product you know when you uh, you know you have amazon as a platform and you're uh, you know selling uh, on a marketplace uh, is there ever uh, you know like a, a platform risk that you carry which is why now you're trying to migrate customers to coming out of wakefit.com and and buying on the website yeah yeah it is true i think uh... See what happens is beyond a point, uh, Amazon can also not support you in your growth. Beyond a point, you might want to grow at a speed which is better and bigger than what Amazon could give it to you. Uh, at a point, you might want to build a affection for your brand, which probably Amazon can't do. Right? There are so many things associated. Uh, it is not just a business or a dependency on the on the platform. So what we do is uh, we we believe in a very long term goal. We want to make sure that you know. If if you buy my product today, you, for for years you should be praising us for anything that you bought big fit, right? Uh, that's a, that's a legacy that we want to create. So, in order to drive that, it's a very conscious effort that we made in the direction of ensuring that you know we we have a direct attention to the customers. Uh, we we ensure that you know they're happy when they're working with us directly. Uh, on the flip side, uh, what happens is uh, you know Amazon's and Flipkart. Uh, uh, these, these are the good companies to be. available upon uh, good companies to be you know serving the customers uh, but what i'm always i i found myself to be aspiring for uh, always is that uh, when you have direct relationship with a customer the relationship is much more deeper which means you can really hear much more much deeper understand them much better and hence you can build products which are much much better and much more connected to the customer i think it's it's like a it's like You're building a product for a customer. And you don't know how this customer behaves and why he has come to you. Right. So when you build your own platforms, you know exactly in and out of what you're building. I think that's also something which is very very important for a brand to build. Fantastic, uh, Ankit. Th- thank you for taking the time to share the Wakefit journey and and what you guys are up to. Um, I, I I definitely learned a lot of creating a generational brand. Uh, thanks for being on the program. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Hi everyone! Uh, welcome to another episode of Stars and Startups with me, Varun Dumidi. Today uh, we have a very interesting uh, startup founder, uh, Ankit. Uh, Ankit is the uh, co-founder of Wakefit. Um, if you guys haven't purchased a mattress uh, in the recent past, you probably haven't heard of the brand uh, Wakefit. But uh, if you have, uh, you would have probably seen the thousands of reviews on the Amazon listing that they have. uh for their orthopedic uh, mattresses that that wake fit sells uh ankit's a, a btech uh, from uh, iit roorkee uh, he uh, was uh, part of a, a chemical engineering company uh, by bayer uh, i'm i'm hope i'm pronouncing it correctly um and and he kind of used that learning to start uh, the mattress company and of course we'll delve a little deeper uh, into all of that in this episode uh, so let's welcome uh, ankit on the show 